guys good morning welcome back to united view hope everyone is doing very well welcome back to another edition of the morning view we are back once again delivering you the latest manchester united news and happenings in this international break how's everybody doing hope you're doing very well hope you're enjoying the international break i mean it could have gone one of <laughs> it could have gone a very different way to how it went previously i think that some of the things we're going to talk about this morning could have been spoken about far much more and uh, the the intensity of the media furor around Manchester United could have been a lot more severe had we not defeated Brentford at the weekend. Nevertheless, it's an international break, so the media got to find something to write about. And indeed, it looks like once again it's going to be Jaden Sancho. So we're going to be talking about him, the latest developments when it comes to... I mean, what's been speculated about is the end of his Manchester United career, quite frankly. Some latest details on the mood reportedly inside the Manchester United camp. Without him, the feeling of the Manchester United manager, Eric Ten Hag, if there's a way back for Jadon Sancho, which it looks less and less likely as time goes on. Um, a little bit of a pushback for myself when it comes to some of the reporting, and we'll get to that. Uh, also, we're going to give a bit of an update on David Beckham, and actually, I guess, less so of Beckham, but more of a wider look at these rumours, reports that if Sheikh Jassim was successful in his takeover of Manchester United, could we see ex-players get involved with not only supporting the bid, but then being involved at Manchester United at a senior level, at an ambassadorial level, or just getting involved in a bit of public um, relations for the Qatar bid anyway. So we'll talk about that and a little bit of just general Manchester United news. So if you haven't already, click the like button and be sure to subscribe as well. Bottom right hand corner. Now let's talk about Jaden Sancho. Jaden Sancho, again, as I mentioned, we're every single week or day, it feels like we're getting more information or more reports, whether you believe parts of them or not, whether you believe all of them, whether you believe a little bit of them. It's always talking about his Manchester United future, his fallout with Eric Ten Hagen, if there's any way back. So there's quite a lot here that was reported yesterday. There was kind of two big articles from the Daily Mail and also from ESPN. So uh, the Daily Mail article came from Matt Hughes. And he's the, uh, I believe, the chief sports reporter for the Daily Mail. He said that Manchester United will look to offload Jane Sancho in January. In addition to lacklustre efforts on the training ground and persistent lateness, Eric Ten Hag has highlighted Sancho's influence on other players as a cause for concern. Eric Ten Hag has told the club that the attitude of other Manchester United players in training has improved since Jadon Sancho was exiled. Eric Ten Hag is demanding that Jadon Sancho make both a public apology and say sorry in front of his teammates before he can return to the Manchester United squad, a stance that has the full backing of his employers. There is no sign of any change, or there's no sign certainly of Sancho looking to apologise anytime soon. Now, Manchester United reportedly according to Matthews from the Mail, are so eager to offload Jane Sancho in January that they are willing to subsidise his £300,000 a week wages if they are able to agree a loan move for the rest of the season. So you could argue that Man United are so willing to get him off the books that maybe they'd be happy to pay half his wages two-thirds of his wages, something like that, to secure him alone away from Manchester United. So he still would be feeling the burden, as it were, of paying these huge wages for Jadon Sancho. Now, the second article, as I mentioned, came from Rob Dawson from ESPN, who said the feeling is growing at Manchester United that Jadon Sancho's career at the club may already be over. Suggestions that Jadon Sancho issued an apology immediately after the incident several weeks ago when Eric Ten Hag spoke about him after the Arsenal game and then Sancho posted that tweet. Um, there were suggestions or reports that maybe Sancho had an issued uh, an apology immediately and it wasn't accepted, etc, etc. Apparently those reports are way off the mark and they are far from the truth. Uh, Eric Ten Hag reportedly, according to Rob Dawson, has not completely closed the door on the possibility that Jadon Sancho could be reintegrated into the squad, but there is an acceptance around Man Manchester United that an apology received now would not have the same impact as an immediate one back in September. 
There are people within the Manchester United squad that are trying to mediate this thing or certainly say to Jaden Sancho, hey, just apologise, just say you're sorry, move on, work your way back into the squad. And those people are the likes of Harry Maguire, Marcus Rashford and Luke Shaw. Reportedly, according to Rob Dawson, they have urged Jane Sancho to apologise and begin working his way back into the Manchester United team. However, there are concerns that the situation is having an effect on the dressing room. So... You get quite a lot there, and I appreciate that's quite a lot, and it's quite a lot of different uh, things being written, quite a lot of different things being said about Jane Sancho. As always, I, I'm I'm somewhat uncomfortable with the reporting that well since Sancho uh, has been exiled, you know the mood in the camps got a lot better, the training's got a lot better, and it was all Jane Sancho's fault, you know, really a negative um, a negative feeling around the squad. I kind of push back on that. I go. Pfft. That's quite heavy things to say. Look, it, it, it may, or not, may or may not be true. Um, you know, in terms of someone, if they've got gripes with the manager and are making those gripes felt, you know, loudly and publicly or certainly with, within the group or what have you, then that might be a, a you know, <laughs> and if, if they're out of that group, then maybe the, the atmosphere might be better. Or maybe he might feel that, you know, he's got a group of players that are dedicated and are showing up on time and are training better, you know, as an overall group. Um, but I lean to more what kind of Rob Dawson is saying in, in his reporting that there's no way that the incident in general is not having some kind of effect on people within the squad. Uh, and the reason is because people will be friends with Jane Sancho. They will be people that like him. You know, um, it's like when, you know, you're friends with two people and they fall out, but you're still friends with both. And you're like, well, it's got nothing to do with me. I'm still friends with that person. I'm still friends with that person. But it makes it awkward. It makes it awkward. Have you been talking to them? Yes, I have. Have you been talking to them? Yeah. You try and, you know, mend fences. You try and do patchwork. You try and mediate. You try and say, hey, maybe you talk to her. Maybe you talk it out. And then, nope, that nope, we've fallen out completely. And it just is what it is. And I think that, I mean, the headline there says no way back for Sancho. I don't think there's any way back for Jane Sancho at this point. I mean, I know, you know, Technically, the way back is that he apologises, and Eric Ten Hag has said in the media several times um, he knows what he has to do, and by all accounts, the apology would be not only a public apology, but it would also be an apology in front of his teammates, etc., etc., etc. But you do get the impression, don't you? We're in October at this point. If Jane Sancho wanted to apologise, he maybe would have apologised you know, a long time ago, and it looks like that's not going to happen. And I think the best thing for everyone involved at this point is for Jane Sancho to leave in January, um, most likely out on loan, and then permanently in the summer. He can move on, he can play, Manchester United can move on. And, you know, for those people that are constantly saying, ah, oh, Jane Sancho was wronged, and uh, get rid of Eric Ten Hag, he's thrown his players under the bus. Like I said, I really push back on that because, for me, it's a fairly cut and dry situation. Um, I think that Jane Sancho can have gripes. I think Jane Sancho can uh, be frustrated. And I think he can say that Eric Ten Hag plays favourites or what have you. And look, maybe Sancho is justified in some of those criticisms. Um, you can see that Eric Ten Hag likes playing Anthony on the right-hand side. You can see that he likes playing certain players over others. Um, and he probably does have favourites. Every manager has their favourites, by the way. Um, but... You know, when it comes to Sancho, I, I, I still to this day baffles me in that Jaden Sancho is not the manager of Manchester United. Jaden Sancho does not pick the team. Jaden Sancho does not run training. That's Eric Ten Hag's job. That's Eric Ten Hag and his coaching staff's job. So he can have frustrations that I trained well, that's not true, and um, I give my all for the club, and all, etc., etc. But you don't pick the team. If the manager says he's not happy with your training or isn't picking you based off your training performance, that you can ha you can have several different um, responses to that. You know, one is to say I don't I I don't agree, but okay, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying to improve, and I'm going to uh, up my levels, see if I can get back into the squad and become the best version of myself. Or I can dispute it on social media, but I know that I'll probably never play for Manchester United again. And that's where he's found himself. And uh, that's why I push back on the people that will say, oh, Eric Ten Hag's thrown him under the bus, and this is Eric Ten Hag. He's power mad and all that kind of stuff. It left Eric Ten Hag with little to no choice. You know, when you come out and publicly undermine him and essentially call him a liar, what's he supposed to do? 
you got me. I was lying. Get back in the squad. You'll be playing every single week now. No, you've got to, you've got to stamp your authority on the situation. No manager would take that. And for those people... I, I, some people, this has gone on for so long now, some people have kind of lost sight of what the original actual incident was and um, and actually the, the precursor to a lot of it. But that original question in that press conference, that original answer, people in their minds have made it out to be this absolute burial of Jane Sancho and his ability and his career and his application. Um, whereas in reality, it's a manager being asked a question. It's a manager quite softly answering it by saying, I pick people based off the training performance. Um, and people uh, have, have twisted that and manipulated that into that he threw Sancho under the bus. He absolutely, you know, wiped his name in shit, you know, and he called him all sorts of names under the sun where he really didn't. Um, and I think the reaction... Was still, I still think the reaction was was not war warranted. I, I I really don't. I really think that's the case. But you know, the situation is what it is. It's happened. You can't change it. You can apologise for it. Jane Sancho doesn't believe that he should. And look, that's that's his right. If he doesn't believe that he should, that's fine. But it means he's not going to play for United again. And that's the situation that he's in right now. So. And it looks like he's going to be on his way out in January. Of course, if we get any more news or stories about where Sancho could be going, we'll, uh, we'll obviously cover it in future videos, future morning views, future news updates and what have you. But that's the latest right now when it comes to Jane Sancho is that at the moment, looks like there's no way back for him. Um, but I do push back on some of the reporting about you know his character because I just think that's easy. I think that's easy reporting. And I think that when you've got, you know, uh, when things aren't going well for you, it's very easy to write stories saying, oh, the, the, you know, the bad influence is out. Because, you know, what, what happens then when in three months' time, when you get more stories about, you know, unrest or whatever? Oh, it, was, it wasn't just Jane Sancho. It was, we've, done, we've done that a lot with a lot of players. And I just don't think that's needed. Um, but, you know, when it comes to certain things that I can envisage to be maybe accurate is, you know, the lack of professionalism, the lateness or the application in training, that's not just reporting from his time at Manchester United. That goes back from, you know, when he was at Dortmund or when he's been on international duty with England or going back with when he was at uh, City under Pep. So I think also what's important to remember with this Sancho thing is that it wasn't just that incident. That was the flashpoint. It wasn't just the the comments after Arsenal and the, the social media posts. I think it's you know, 18 months of stuff building up to this. And, uh, and I think that was the final straw for Eric Ten Hag, certainly. Uh, but there you go. That's the latest when it comes to Jane Sancho. Uh, just a couple of other very brief things. Uh, I wanted to get into this sort of story that was going around yesterday regarding David Beckham and ex-players getting involved in the Qatari takeover bid. Obviously, it was Dave Beckham talking over the weekend at the F1, saying that he knew the best people to bring Manchester United back to where they needed to be. And the interviewer at the time said, does that shake jazz him? And he said, well, we'll see. Then people, we spoke about this yesterday, Flex and myself saying, well, obviously he's got strong links to Qatar. Obviously PSG uh, had him as a player uh, under the Qatari ownership. He was an ambassador at the 2022 World Cup for Qatar as well. So clearly strong links there. And a report went around yesterday. I think it came out of Talk Sports suggesting that David Bo uh, Bockham, David Beckham had been offered a, an ambassadorial role with Manchester United if indeed this Qatari takeover was successful. Now, Ben Jacobs has said that although the 9-2 Foundation have discussed involving a number of ex-Manchester United players if successful, there is nothing more than that at this stage and won't be unless they win. Um, David Beckham has also made it clear he'd only talk about any potential role if and after Qatar win so I think it's one of those ones where people may be getting a bit ahead of themselves there have been reports suggesting that ex-players not only David Beckham but others as well would be involved in the Qatari or Sheikh Jassim owned Manchester United plan and you might see ex-players come out and back the bid to you know get a bit more momentum going and get a you know trying to get a bit more public support uh, surrounding it. But I think these are a lot of hypotheticals at the moment. This is, wow, David Beckham would be offered this role. So-and-so would be offered this role. But it's based on if Sheikh Jassim wins. And at the moment, that's still a big if. We're still not closer to getting that if over the table, you know, with, uh, with, with all of these people. Now, does David Beckham maybe know something that 
us fans or maybe even some journalists uh, don't possibly because again he's got strong links to to Qatar because of the you know his his work with them previously so maybe he does and maybe there there have been those um, informal conversations about hey if this was to be successful what would you like to be involved in would you like to be involved how can we make it successful how can we have some synergy with yourself and Manchester United and and what have you so I'm sure there may be been those informal very very brief conversations but you feel like the big biggest conversation the most important conversation to have right now is how do we win this takeover race because it's not over yet and it doesn't look like it's going to be over anytime soon so this feels like a big what if situation what if we were to win would you be interested what if we actually got this done fairly quickly would you what 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 role would you look for you know all, all that kind of stuff so i think maybe people will be getting a little bit carried away uh with it but you know if indeed it's successful david beckham uh, you never know could be involved in that so what other ex players actually let me know in the uh, in the comment section below what other ex players would you like to see involved if indeed uh qatar on Sheikh jassim was successful in their takeover bid for manchester united there you go but there you go, guys. That's the latest Manchester United news for you this morning. Short, sharp, sweet. It's always very difficult for me to say that. Uh, on a Tuesday morning, if you haven't already, click the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. What's on tap for the remainder of the day? Well... I say stay tuned because there's always a lot of content uh, coming on United View and you never know who's going to show up. You never know what's going to pop up at any point. So I'm just going to leave that one there. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that one there. You never know. Anyway, guys, have a great Tuesday and I'll speak to you again very soon. I'm out of here. Peace. Peace.